Hi and welcome. My name is Sarah Baysmore. I am the School Counseling Specialist here at the Department of Ed and I am super excited to have with me Tammy and Michelle who are both co-founders of Inner Resource and they reached out to me and asked if they could host a webinar series for school-based mental health practitioners throughout the state of Virginia uh, during the month of November to show our gratitude but also to, to highlight some skills and some ways that we can take care of ourselves during this really unprecedented time. Uh, there really aren't adjectives to describe what we're all going through right now. So we're gonna go with unprecedented. Um, but I wanted to have this, this first uh, webinar just to sort of introduce Tammy and Michelle to you all, but also to give you some information about what you can expect each week during the series. So to start, why don't we first just hear a little bit about you and uh, Tammy and Michelle, if you can share about your background experiences and, and let us know a little bit about you. Sure, well, uh, thank you, Sarah, for having us today and for giving us this opportunity to be with um, the practitioners around the Commonwealth who I know each of you are working very, very hard to support schools and communities. Um, I am a school psychologist by training. Um, I'm also a clinical psychologist, but my heart is with school communities and supporting teachers and also supporting um, other folks like yourself who work in the building. So um, I'm also a professor at James Madison University and I direct the school psychology program there. Hi, I'm Michelle Kelty, and we're really happy that you all are joining us for this series and appreciate from the bottoms of our hearts what you're doing every day for our kids and families, um, knowing that you show up and you give it more than your all. And we recognize the, the kind of commitment that that really takes. So thank you, um, school-based mental health professionals. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, K-12. Um, professionals. I'm Michelle Kelty, as I said, I'm a professor uh, of counseling at JMU, I'm a licensed professional counselor and also a licensed school counselor and the director of the school counseling program at JMU. And as Sarah mentioned, co-founder of Inner Resource with Tammy. I'm a mindfulness consultant and coach and uh, Tammy and I work with quite a bit with schools around the Commonwealth to support the inner resources and well-being of school communities. So thank you for having us, Sarah. Oh, no, thank you all for, for your generous gift of, of doing this. Um, so this the webinar series is gonna be titled Strengthening Your Capacity and to Serve. Why is it right now so important for mental health practitioners to be focusing in on strengthening our personal capacity when there are just so many other demands on our professional time? Why should we prioritize this? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I think many of us who are used to caring for others and putting others first, sometimes say, well, I don't have time for myself or that feels selfish to me or you know, why would I take the time to do that? Um, but I think if we really kind of look at our own lives or even the lives of people around us and think about the difference that it makes when you bring your best self into a situation, or maybe you can think of a, a challenging person in your life, whether it's a coworker or a family member, wouldn't we want them to kind of give that gift to themselves to attend to their own well-being? Because then they can bring a better version of themselves, a more centered version of themselves into the space that they're in, you know, with us, whether that's at work, whether that's at home. So really it is in the service of ourselves, but it's also in the service of the communities that we're a part of if we do give ourselves that gift in that time. Yeah, I, I also think that sometimes we ask ourselves that question and other folks might ask that of us too. Like, why are you engaging in this self-care? It can be perceived, I think we believe as being somewhat selfish. And in fact, it's not because to sustain our capacity to be present for others, we really need to strengthen that capacity in whatever way works 
for you as an individual. So um, I think the reasoning and the excuse that other folks give us for not engaging in self-care, um, we really need to, to, try, to try to not fall into that belief, right? I think that's just such a good point. And I, I struggle with self-care often, but I've, I noticed that when I, when my uh, self-care tank is depleted, that I'm not, I'm not doing the best work that I could be doing. And so if we're not going to do it for ourselves, then we can at least do it for those that we're serving. And we need to look at it through that lens and that it's not, like you said, Tammy, it's not selfish. It's, it's truly, it's like fine tuning your motor so that you're able to per perform at your best. Um, for those that you're serving. And uh, one thing that an analogy that I really like when we think about self-care is, is dividing kind of what we do into vitamins and first aid. And vitamins are things we need every day to run at our best um, capacity. And those, those little things or, or large things that we need to do every day so that we can be at our best. And then the first aid kit is those things that we need when, when we're struggling, that maybe it's not something you do every day, but it's something you kind of have on the back burner that you can pull out when you recognize that you are facing a, a stressor or something happens that uh, depletes your, your, your tank. Um, so what is your favorite way to strengthen your, your own capacity, either as a vitamin or in your first aid kit? I really like that analogy. Um, I take a lot of vitamins, I do. Um, so there are a lot of different practices throughout my day that I will fall back into. Some are very intentional, like um, a daily movement of some sort. That might be a walk. It might be a yoga practice, but some sort of movement. Um, and journaling is really important to me. Some of my vitamins just pop up, like a stepping back and taking a moment for breath work or engaging in some sort of mindfulness activity, mindful eating for a few moments or mindful walking. So I have a lot of different vitamins that um, come in different shapes and the colors that, that I use. First aid for me, Sarah, is sometimes a larger dose of that vitamin, if I could stick with that analogy. Um, so instead of just a short journaling activity, I might journal for longer. Instead of a half hour walk, I might take a half day hike. Um, and, and then sometimes a first aid means it reaching out to other people who support me, reaching out to a friend or a supported counselor or someone else in my peer group whom I can connect with. So that's a great analogy. Yeah, I love that analogy too. It's wonderful to think about that and, and for everybody to kind of contemplate. Um, I think for me, vitamins tend to be getting outside. You know, I feel really just walking outside makes kind of resets my system sometimes. Um, so anything that I can do to get in nature can be really helpful. Um, walking, intentionally connecting with people who are supportive, um, and that do feel like they have my best interest at heart, I think is, is really helpful for me with my, with my vitamins. Um, definitely, you know, using mindfulness, um, but I think kind of moving into first aid, maybe similar to what Tammy was saying, I might do a, a longer meditation. I might try to schedule that in and say, you know what, I need a half an hour. I've got to have a reset. I need to actually prioritize this for a longer period of time, especially for me, if I notice that my thinking becomes more negative, then I know I'm getting tired and I know I'm getting stressed and I need to take some responsibility to spend some time focusing in with that. And then I don't journal as much as I used to. I'd like to get back around to it, but I definitely noticed for me that um, the first aid, the, the journal comes out. <laughs> it's, like, it's great, it's time to start writing, it's time to start reflecting a little more intentionally. Um, so those are some things that come to the top of my mind. Those are great. And that's something I'm, I'm working on trying to recognize during, uh, you know, during the day when a stressful moment happens, or maybe I'm just feeling some Zoom fatigue from having to be in meetings back to back to back. Um, one of my first aid things that I'm doing is, is taking a step back and just going outside in the middle of the day. And just even if it's just five minutes, um, 
it's amazing how that can just be a, a refresher and a replenisher for me. Uh, you know, and, and I think one of the vitamins for me is just sleep. I need to really be mindful of, of allowing myself to get an, a good night's sleep on a regular basis. Um, because I sometimes will catch myself, you know, working into the late hours, um, one day after another. And, and that's just a really unhealthy routine that sometimes I fall into. So that's, that's where I, it's one of those things that I really need to be mindful of. Um, so the webinar series is going to be short videos that are going to be released every week for school-based mental health practitioners that are just going to give some really practical tips of how that they can be, they can incorporate mindfulness or wellness into their lifestyle. And these tips might be things that folks see as vitamins, or they might be things that folks see as first aid items. Um, I think that's something else that's going to be different. You know, everyone has different needs. So recognizing where they fit for you is going to be important. Um, and that's something that I really hope for participants is that they find things that they, maybe they didn't necessarily have before that can, that can fulfill that capacity for them, either as a vitamin or as a first aid item. Um, what are some hopes that you have for folks that, that partake in these webinars? One thing that comes to my mind I, I, is just people giving themselves the permission to be an equally important part of the equation of this helping process. So whatever form that takes for those of you who are listening, whether you're a school psychologist, a school counselor, a social worker, a teacher, um, that you recognize that in this equation of, of, of supporting students and supporting school communities, that you are an equally important part of the equation. So we're kind of taking away this sense that, oh, this is selfish and you need to take yourself out. No, you, you are equally important. And how you prioritize that and how you carry that out is really up to you. Hoping, we're, I'm hoping that you'll find something in this series that really resonates with you and you can take it and make it your own in whatever way you want to so that you do feel strengthened and supported from the inside and to recognize also your value in this process. Yes, and just to echo a little bit of what Michelle said, um, the self-care strategies and the way you nurture your inner capacity is so deeply personal. So what we present in the webinar just really may not resonate with you, and that is okay. I think we can be very critical of ourselves when we try something and we're like, well, that didn't work. What's wrong with me? You know, no, I'm hoping that folks watch these webinars and whatever comes of the activity or suggestion we provide, they, like Michelle said, give themselves continued permission to keep searching for something that does work for you. And it doesn't have to be go big or go home. It can be something um, very, um, you know, small in nature that you begin to incorporate into your daily work life um, or your daily personal life so that work can be not only like so you're effective with the kids you're working with and the students, the communities you're supporting, but also fulfilling for yourself. You know, that we, I hope that people can engage in enough self-care that they can find joy in the work they're doing, even when it is so demanding and hard. So it's one of my hopes. Really love that, Tammy. I think it's a question we all need to ask ourselves is how do I want to feel when I'm at work? And if I'm not feeling that on a regular basis, why not? And chances are, you know, incorporating some mindfulness or some some self-care into your routine can hopefully bring some of those 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 feelings consistently into the work that you're doing because we all deserve to feel appreciated, valued, calm, joyful, um, excited about the work that we're doing. Uh, Cause that's how you're, that's how you're spending a majority of your day. So how can we bring those emotions into, into that work and, um, and, and make it be something that's more of a constant as opposed to an exception. So I am really excited about these webinars. They're going to be short. They're going to be practical. Um, School-based mental health practitioners are often seen as leaders with mental health, me mental wellness in their building. So I encourage you to also share these with teachers and staff. Um, you know, that's, that's the thing we're hopeful of is that it's going to be something that is far reaching because we know that everyone, 
uh, right now can use, use these tips. So feel free to share and disseminate with others as we know that you are, are acting as leaders um, in your building for mental, mental health and mental wellness. So thank you so much, Tammy and Michelle. Is there anything you wanna add before we close out this introduction? No, I just think it's um, really, um, it's great that the DOE is recognizing this as um, something that um, we need to, to talk about and think about in, in addition to skill building and knowledge building for ourselves. Um, so I'm really appreciative that the DOE is supporting this type of, of webinar. Oh, well, yeah. we, we are so grateful for the work that's happening out in the field. And I think November is the perfect time for us to show that gratitude to the, the folks that are doing doing that work out in our schools. So I think this is well-timed and um, yeah, and I'm so grateful for you all that you stepped forward and we're willing to, to support this effort. It's wonderful to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. You too.